Um, what I'm going to be doing is giving you uh, an overview of 35 years plus minus of uh, monitoring of uh, Protea uh, repellii in the Sinai Valley. Um, much of what I'm going to be showing you here is preliminary, um, but I think um, it still uh, conveys an, uh, an interesting story. For those of you who are not familiar with this part of the Berg, uh, you've got Sani Pass going up here like that, and we have the uh, police border post up here. Our plots are in two groups of three plots each, one group at there and the other group down here. Um, just to orientate you, there's Sani Pass there. Just a different view, which uh, I hope conveys something of the uh, three-dimensional nature of the terrain. And again, you can see where the two blocks of plots are. Um, what I'm doing here is just giving you an overview of the uh, size of the plots. And what you see here are the number of adult trees which we recorded in 1979 number of adults which we recorded again in 1987 but please don't think these are two different populations they're not where however when you come to the seedlings there are two cohorts of seedlings which uh, we um, identified and tagged um, and what you see here the changes uh, are the numbers recorded in 79 and in 87 uh, as I said we had six plots and what you see here standing out is the plot number five, which was set aside for no burning. And these other plots, as you would have seen from the previous table, were scheduled to receive different burning treatments. Um, as time went on, uh, unfortunately, the treatments were not uh, continuously applied as prescribed. There were arson fires and various other factors which came into play. In analyzing the fire frequencies, we were able to identify basically three periods uh, with different um, fire regimes, uh, or fire frequencies that occurred in them. Uh, what you see here is uh, seedling survivorship for the first period, 1987, and I think it's quite clear here, and it's pretty uh, much what one might expect from very small plants growing in grassland, keep fire out, and the survivorship is high. By the way, if you want to convert these to percentages, obviously just multiply by 100. And the seedlings have got the least chance of surviving uh, with an annual burn. Also, when one stops to think about it, probably quite... Uh, uh, much as one would expect, as the trees get bigger and that because they're growing in a grassland, uh, they're able to uh, get beyond the uh, harmful effects of fire going through the grassland. Um, so not a great deal of difference, but nevertheless, still a slight improvement in survivorship um, by keeping um, fire frequency very low. Please note that although I'm calling, causing this, uh, calling this uh, exclusion, fire was not excluded over the whole 35-year period. What we're seeing here is uh, the fire seasonality on a biannual basis. And so there's a biannual uh, winter burn, spring burn, and uh, autumn spring. And the winter burn seems to be the uh, frequency uh, and season uh, that is going to promote uh, survivorship the most amongst the seedlings. Uh, when you get to adults, not a great deal um, to pick and choose between the uh, season of burn if you're burning every second year. What we're seeing here is... Uh, Fire frequency seedling survivorship between uh, 79 and 2014. So this is this whole period here. And what um, we, these two lines represent is a five-year return, um, which was derived from this uh, situation here, where five years is more or less the long-term 
uh, frequency with which fire occurred in plot 5, and the two-year frequency is a kind of mean over these other five plots here. And uh, what we see here is that five-year frequency uh, promotes survivorship of seedlings, Put fire into that grass and more frequently, more frequently, and the seedlings um, can't handle it. The big problem we've got here is that unfortunately we were not able to uh, get back to the plots frequently enough. Uh, so we would have liked more points uh, along the lines here, but that just didn't come to pass. Um, adult survivorship, not much to pick and choose. One of the big things that you do need to appreciate here, though, please, is we did not know the age of the adult trees when we started in 1979. That's a, another challenge altogether. So one's got to be quite cautious about assuming that uh, fire uh, that, we, uh, that occurred during this 35-year period was in itself... Uh, responsible for this uh, low survivorship here. It might be that the trees, when we started monitoring them, the adult trees, uh, many of them might already have been, as it were, nearing the end of their natural lives. Uh, what we're looking at here are our two populations of seedlings and uh, again looking at a five-year return and a two-year return of the fire and uh, you can see uh, what happened after three years. There's a massive drop off um, in the five year return, but again, uh, with a two year frequency of burn, uh, the ceilings don't handle it. Uh, in, in the case of the adults, and please uh, I draw your attention back to what I said earlier that we're not dealing with two separate populations of adult trees, just uh, trees which were recorded in the two different years and you can see there's not a great deal of difference once they get um, uh, tall enough. The same story that I've just uh, said really comes out in this graph here um, because what this is showing you is that once approximately 25% of the live canopy of the tree has been lost through fire or uh, some other agency such as insect attack perhaps, uh, the trees just don't survive. About 25% seems to be about the absolute minimum that the live foliage that the trees need to be able to survive. To give you some idea of these uh, rankings, um, here we have a dead tree uh, recently fallen over, we would rank that pretty close to category one. In other words, only about 25% foliage, perhaps going to a two, whereas these ones you can see here, uh, we would have ranked those as uh, uh, having more than 75% uh, foliage. Uh, a nice example of a, a very tall protea, as you can see from us standing here. Um, although uh, the amount of foliage is low, it's probably going to survive for quite a while because it's well above the height of the uh, fires. And you know that picture hardly needs any comment. So, um, what we can say here is that fire exclusion promotes the survivorship of the trees, of the seedlings. Um, adult tre trees, fire exclusion promotes uh, higher survivorship by, uh, while annual and biannual burns, irrespective of season, uh, accelerate the rates of mortality, but only very gradually. Canopy, canopy volume, in other words, the number of live leaves uh, determines survivorship. Very, very important um, in analyzing our data that uh, the uh, records which are being kept uh, need to be accurate with, in terms of when they these fires occurred and uh, what area uh, they actually occurred across. We need more detailed monitoring of seedling establishment um, and it needs to be undertaken more frequently than we were able to do it. Um, and finally, seedling and um, ultimately survivorship is closely linked 
to their uh, microhabitats. The last point I would like to make, please, data I've presented here is in respect of proteorepellii. Uh, you cannot extrapolate the findings that we've got from our results directly to proteocaphora. We're dealing with a different um, situation there. Thank Bill Small uh, from way back when we started this project for all the support that he gave us in um, maintaining the treatments while he was uh, in the forestry department and later with Parksport. Thank you.